Hi, this is Brian Stillman at CES 2019. We are here in the DJI booth. There is so much cool stuff here. Uh, as a filmmaker, I can't even begin to tell you how exciting this is. But first, we are with uh, Michael Oldenburg. Uh, tell me, who are you? What, what are we seeing here? Yeah, well, you're right. My name is Michael. I'm on the communications team here at DJI. Uh, and we, you're absolutely right. We've got tons of interesting tech for whether you're a consumer and you want to capture content or you're on the professional end of things, uh, we've got you covered here at the DJI booth. This is a controller for our newest consumer and enterprise drone called the Mavic 2 series. So on the consumer front, we've got this one right here. This is the Mavic 2 Zoom. So it's got a zoom camera on it. Right next to it, we've got the Mavic 2 Pro, which has the one-inch Hasselblad sensor on the front. Completely the same drone. The only difference is the camera on the front. Okay. And we now, we've been talking about a new controller for it. That's right. What is the new controller? What makes it different? What makes it special? This is the new smart controller. Uh, it works with all the Mavic 2 drones. And the biggest change that you'll notice by looking at it simply is that you do no longer need to have a mobile phone with you to control your drone. So an iOS or Android device. This has a ultra high brightness screen built right into it. So you can get up and running in about 30 seconds or less flying your drone. It's got the DJI Go app built into it. Um, and it just makes it seamless and easier, especially for that professional semi-pro content creator who maybe wants to conserve their battery power on their mobile device for something else. Right. Uh, now it's an all-in-one system. So what changed at DJI that allowed you guys to update the, the controller in that way, to get rid of the mobile device and to integrate it all at once? Was there anything that, that allowed that that innovation to go through? combination of two things, I think, on the technology front. For a long time, we've made a separate display called Crystal Sky, which was the monitor only. Um, that was really great for the prosumer, professional filmer, cinematographer. What we basically did is combine those two pieces of technology of the remote and that screen into one piece. And this is the first version you're seeing right here. So what are the things that make it easier then for the person who's operating the Mavic? How does that change the experience? Yeah, I mean, if, number one, obviously, built-in display. So it Getting, up, getting set up and, and getting up in the air is much quicker. You don't have any cables and things to connect. Um, the screen is uh, about twice as bright as your standard smartphone. So again, even in broad daylight, you can have clear vision into what the live view of the camera is, getting into your camera and drone settings and things like that. Those are the two biggest features, really. That's really cool. Um, now, is this the controller that ships with the Mavic? Is this a separate piece that you have to get? How exactly does that work? It's a separate add-on, and it retails for $649. And where can people pick that up? DJI.com. So we're now looking at the, the Ronin uh, 2 gimbal system. Um, and what we announced actually at NAB last year, which I think you probably saw, was this um, little module here that we call DJI Force. So this is uh, a module that interprets your hand motion into camera motion. So if you look just over your shoulder, you'll see this camera following the motion that I'm putting it through with force. So it really allows that camera operator to get that smooth, steady control without having to strap on the entire rig. Um, you can put it on a two-handed system like this, or you can put it on a tripod if you want. Just real steady, precise motion. Uh, it's mountable to a bunch of different accessories. OK, so you as the operator are holding this and holding the force. Yes. The camera is mounted on a gimbal, on yes. a DJI gimbal. Yes. And now the gimbal can be mounted wherever. wherever. Yeah. You can put it on a, on, a, on a ready rig, you can mount it to a vehicle, however you might normally use it, and now you don't have to have that operator right behind it to remotely control the camera position. That is very cool. This is also a much lighter unit when you're not physically attached to the camera. Um, I know for those of us who probably need to work our chest and arm muscles out a little bit more, that's particularly helpful. Yeah, the, people, the response to this product simply because of that and the intuitive way of the control, you know, it, just, it really just follows your movement. It's been a real, uh, we've got a lot of positive feedback from it. This is amazing. I mean, I can even use this one-handed with the mic and the camera is following my movement. That is incredible. Meanwhile, if it's mounted on the front of a car, if it's mounted on some sort of crane system, it gives me, as a filmmaker, the control that I wouldn't necessarily have because it's up on a unit. So you're always going to get that steady sort of flow and that steady motion when it's up on a, on a crane or something like that. But now I can actually direct it. That is really cool. Where can people pick that up, and what does something like that retail for? It retails for $13.99. You can get it on DJI.com, and you can probably find it from our partners like B&H Photo and others that supply that high-end gear to the professional camera. 
That is very cool. Um, how long were you working on something like this? Like, what is, was there a call? Was there a demand for something like this? Or do you guys look around and say, what can we do next to make this stuff uh, accessible? As soon as we came out with the Ronin, to, uh, people started to ask for these kinds of accessories. It took us about a year after announcing Ronin 2 to bring these to market. We also brought these to market with the DJI Master Wheels. So if you're used to using you know, the mechanical wheels to get that same kind of smooth motion control, We've got that product as well. We just don't have it here on the on the table at CES. But we brought this forward as you know more of a um, forward-thinking piece of technology that really, for people who are new to the industry and really want to use the latest in tech, this is the perfect product for them with the same result. There's some new, smaller technology for filmmakers at DJI. Why don't we uh, take a look at that? Yeah, let's go check it out. So the product we're featuring on this table is the brand new Osmo Pocket. It's our smallest stabilized camera that we've ever created. If you remember the original Osmo, it was about this size. Now it literally fits in the palm of your hand. Now that is definitely small. What kind of specs are we talking about? We're shooting 4K up to 60. Uh, so it's pretty much as good as you can get for something that size. Can we get slow motion stuff like that on it? Yep, exactly. And you can pair it to your smartphone uh, using the new DJI Mimo app, and that gives you a bigger viewfinder. It's got a one-inch built-in color screen on it, but if you want a bigger viewfinder, you can do that. And then it's got a few smart features, too. So it'll do hyperlapse, motion time-lapse, all those smart features you come to expect from DJI products are built in using the smartphone app. How do things like focus and stuff like that work? Is it a fixed focus? Is it something that you can adjust? You can tap to focus, but it is an infinite focus camera. Yeah. I, I just want to show people. Yeah. I'm holding a microphone. Most people know what a microphone is, you know, how big it is. Look how tiny this thing is. I mean, that's insane. This is smaller than my phone. This is this is like a Pez dispenser for video. Exactly. So take me through some of the features. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, I mean, the biggest thing, right, gimbal stabilized, right? So three-axis gimbal, you're going to get that buttery smooth cinematic footage. It's got uh, our active track technology built in. Um, if you're a YouTuber or a content creator and you want to quickly flip the camera on yourself, three taps, it turns around, identifies my face, and it'll automatically keep my face in the shot as I move it. That face track technology automatically turns on when it's in selfie mode. Now I notice we mentioned before this has a one inch screen on the back. That's right. Uh, has to be the smallest screen I've ever seen in my life. Um, as a filmmaker, I'm, I'm going to admit that's pretty small, but it does let you at least know what you're shooting. Exactly, exactly. And then you can take your smartphone, right, and uh, this little clip slides out. We have a module that you can either be USB-C or Lightning to attach your iPhone or your Android device, and again, you have a much larger viewfinder with full custom manual uh, settings for the camera and the video, uh, so you can really get as granular as you like. I'm curious, I'm looking at the screen, and we'll just turn this around so people can see the screen for a second. Very small, this thing right here is the screen. Now it's square, which is a sort of strange aspect ratio, and as a filmmaker, not gonna lie, makes me twitch a little bit. Yeah. What's going on with that? It's just, an, it, again, uh, just a viewfinder, right, to help you along. It's definitely not what you're going to shoot with all the time if you're shooting something on the pro level or the semi-pro level. But for most consumers, to be able to see this, and it's a touch screen too, so you have access to all sorts of the features built right in. It's just meant to be an all-in-one all unit where the phone is the accessory as opposed to vice versa. So the footage that you're pulling, though, is going to be a 16 by 9 aspect ratio it's yes. not not squared yeah, you like you can actually select 16 by 9 in a few other formats as well that's cool because i know for a lot of things like social media the videos that a lot of people are shooting are square because they want them to fit into like a facebook post yep. or whatever so having that capability is definitely yep. cool absolutely you got it now so the technology we're getting smaller and smaller and smaller <laughs> i thought the original osmo was pretty small and pretty useful yeah. what what inspired this what made you say no 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 we got to go even smaller yeah, I think it's about finding something that you can continually take everywhere that you go with you. So last year here at CES, we debuted this product, which is the Osmo Mobile 2, right? So it clips your smartphone in, gives you that same high quality stabilization, but we thought we could do one better, right? And this, you can literally put it in your pocket and take it anywhere with you. I noticed it's attached to a selfie stick in some places. That's right. Yeah, there's a lot of different accessories for this product. It's actually a, um, a pan and tilt wheel, 
Um, there's a uh, 3.5 millimeter audio jack that you can uh, get for it. There's a wireless module, so you can post this thing up and have complete control over Wi-Fi right from the DJI app on your phone. Um, there's an underwater uh, kit for it, so really it's, it's meant to be versatile and to go anywhere and as a content creator give you a lot of possibilities that you know, maybe you haven't had before just simply because of the size of this camera. That's cool with the, um, with the remote control and stuff like that. It's the type of thing where you could stick it on a crane or yep. something like that. You know, if you're a budget filmmaker, if you're a budget content creator, you can sort of rig this thing out to get stuff in there that you might not normally have access to which uh, I definitely think is really cool. The, the concern I have is, are things going to get smaller and smaller to the point where we can't even see them? Where does DJI stop? Where does the madness end? Where is the line? That's a really good question. I don't have an answer for you. Maybe let's check back in in about a year or so. So something like this, how long does the battery last? How long am I going to be able to shoot with this before I run into problems? Also, what sort of capacity are we looking at? Uh, well, for battery life, you, if you're shooting at 4K 30, you get two solid hours of continuous filming time with this. Um, in terms of storage, it's got a removable SD card slot right here. So whatever size SD card slot you want to put in there. This is an awesome unit. Where can people pick this up and what does this retail for? It retails for $349, again at DJI.com, but also some of our select partners like a b &H Photo and other places like that. When's this going to be available? It's already available. Okay, that's cool. Um, this is great, man. Listen, lots of awesome products. DJI's got some really cool stuff this year. I got to admit, trying to maintain my journalistic detachment, but I'm sort of freaking out. This is really cool stuff. I am Brian Stillman. We're here at the DJI booth at CES 2019. Be terrific.com. Be terrific.